two bobbin fly. Um, it's got a wood duck tail. It's got a gray body. It's got a black rib, a black head. It has two little sprigs of crystal flash inside, and it has um, a CDC wing that I trimmed to shape. Now, you see how short this wing is, right? One of my friends likes to fish, fish these in the surface film, and he leaves the CDC about three times as long. And the reason he does that is the CDC will be in the surface film and the body will be hanging underneath the surface film. Okay, he uses it as an emerger. I fish this as one of my three fly rig when I'm nymphing on Puda. Okay. So we're going to attach the thread. Which color? The white. And this is 14 knot. Oh, I'm sorry, gray. Okay, I'll, I'll go For the color blind my... people, it's the white. <laughs> okay, it's the gray. 14. Who can see that? Good I'm using gray. Gordon Griffith's 14 knot. You can use Uni 8 knot. Just be careful with how much thread you put on. One of the things is building up the thread body, and it can be a real pain in the ass with the uni if you put too much thread on. So I'm just going to go back to where my hook set position or my tail set position would normally be. What? Okay, I'm going to bring the thread back forward. I'm going to grab my other black bobbin of A dot. Just going to tie this in because this is going to be a rib and the finish. Head on the fly. I just want to catch it in. There we go. And it, so I don't have to trim all the time. I'll just pull this through until I get it where I really want it so I don't have to cut it. Boom, I'm done. I will hold the thread on the far side of the hook shank and wind it back. I'm holding it down so it's literally underneath the hook at this point. And just hang it out of the way. It doesn't matter where it goes, just get it out of the way. I'm going to take some wood duck. I want to get the fibers so they're fairly well marked, so I'm going to go a ways up the feather. Just get rid of the fluff. I know I'm going to take four to six fibers, depending on how heavy it is. I'm going to tie this in so it's going to be just about as long as the usable shank of the hook. Again, I'm tying this in with the gray thread. Not white. I'm going to leave the wood duck in and tie it in. Why am I doing that? Build up the body. I want to build up the body. Right. I'm going to go back about two-thirds of the way, and then I'm going to trim the wood duck off. The butts off, sorry. Now I'm going to do a thread-built body. Did you say you had the tips of the wood duck sticking out? Or? Yeah, they're right down here. And how it's about the length of the shank of the hook. Okay. From, the, from the barb behind the eye. Okay. Thread bodies. Who's built thread bodies before? Raise your hands. Okay. Some have, some haven't. I'm going to take the thread all the way up <coughs> and I'm going to bring it all the way back. And what am I going to do? I'm going to stop one thread short. I'm going to bring it all the way back. I'm going to bring it back and I'm going to stop one thread short. I'm going to go all the way up. One additional thread short. Each time I'm stopping one short from where I was last time. Again, I'm going to stop pretty much one thread short and go back. And you can see what's happening. I'm basically building up this, this nice little thread body. Nice little taper to it. Now, I had to do a whole lot of turns because I'm using 14 knot. If you guys are using 8 knot, it's going to take you half as many turns to do this. Okay? So, what have I got right now? I've got a thread body. I'm going to tie it off. Now, when I'm using 14 knot thread, I don't use my fingers because they're, they're pretty rough and I'm going to break this thread all the time, so I'll use a bobbin. All I need is two turns to tie this off. Not a bobbin, a uh, whip finisher. Okay? Now, I've got my black thread, right? And my rib is going to be black thread. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that tail that wants to keep moving on me and I'm going to make sure I'm underneath the tail. And I'm going to counterwind this. Everyone knows what that means. Counterwind, what that means, if I'm, if I'm winding my thread, I'm, I'm right-handed, I'm winding a thread on like this, right? Right. Forward. If I'm counterwinding, I'm coming the opposite direction. Why am I counterwinding? It doesn't dig into the thread. Right. You lose it in the middle of the thread 
if you wrap it in the same direction. Okay, so I'm going to counterwind this and make, make a rib. It really does stand out, doesn't it? Okay, now I'm going to bring this forward. Now, what do I do to tie it off? Normally, I do a whip finish, right? Okay, but the fly is going to be finished with black thread. You can do a couple of half hitches, or you can do a reverse whip finish. Normally, I'd go like this, but it's in the reverse order. So I can start on the other side and reverse it. All you'd have to do is switch to right-handed. There's always, there's always one in the room. Okay, so now I've got a body. I've got a tail. I've got my thread going in the correct direction that I want it to go in. I'm going to grab a piece of this crystal flash. Now this is micro pearl crystal flash. You can use standard pearl crystal flash. It doesn't matter, especially on the smaller ones. Um, you can tie this as big as a 13 if you want to. But I usually fish 15s and 17s. If I want to fish anything smaller than a 17, I've got to go to another hook. So if I want two strands, if I just stick this on the, like I just said, on the thread, fold it over and grab both of them at the same time. Slide it on top. Can you see what it's happening in the, in the video? Yeah. It's right on top. I'm positioning it right on top of the hook shank. I'm going to hold it in position, go back until I get fairly large head, probably about 20% of the body length. Now, I like this to stand up, not to lay down on the fly. So what I will do is I will take one wrap behind. And then if I want to lay it down, I can lay it down later. I'm going to trim it fairly short, not too short. Okay, I'm going to take two pieces of CDC. Uh, this is really cool stuff that's in the box. This is Mark Pettigene's Iron Blue Dunn CDC. This Iron Blue Dunn is just really good stuff. I cut more fish with this color. Okay, because this wing, this wing, I'm going to leave, remember I said you can do them short or long? If I leave it long, it's because I want to fish it in the surface film. Okay, now, one of the features on this fly is I'm going to keep wrapping this back. Because I physically want to have, number one, length, but I also want to have a nice head on this fly because it's an emerging insect. It's kind of fuzzy right now. You can get rid of that by just wrapping over the top of the eye and folding it back. Just fill it in a little bit. Good finish. Yeah. That's the basic fly. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to trim it at a, back at a 45 towards with the tip of the scissors towards the tail. One clip. Okay. I'm going to come underneath. I'm going to make a small little clip here on both sides. Now, the other thing I like to do is I like to thin it and round it just a little bit. So now I have a triangle. It doesn't look very natural, does it? If I rest my hand on the vise like so, put the scissors on my thumb, I can control what's going on. And I'm going to trim twice. Once, twice. Now it looks more like a little bubble. Now I'm going to turn it this way. Okay. And you notice how fat it is on the sides? I don't like them fat. So I'm going to very carefully trim okay. a triangle on one side. And again, I'm supporting something. I'm supporting it on my finger. Triangle on the other side. Okay, and you get this great little shape, which is going to hold an air bubble just fine. 